Hello YouTube. Today in this tutorial I'm going to talk about the magnet the permanent magnet and the magnetization of the permanent magnet. Uh, there were a lot of questions how to define uh, the custom uh, material for permanent magnets that basically have uh, a custom direction for magnetization and also how to uh, generally um, uh, basically simulate the permanent magnet magnetizations in uh, Maxwell. So we had some uh, very um, primitive uh, simulations at the very beginning of this chapter um, about this um, having the permanent magnet and uh, the direction of the magnetization, but we didn't work too much around it. So now in this uh, category, this, in this basically um, tutorial, I'm going to show you um, a very good example of uh, a parent magnet with four poles, as you can see in this picture. And uh, we are going to first learn how to model that, and then second, how to uh, work out with the uh, excitation and the boundaries. And uh, after that, we are going to look at the results and interpret them. And at the end of that, we are going to have an alternative method of uh, getting the same uh, magnetization directions uh, with uh, defining a material that acts like that. So we will see how we can get that and how we can um, uh, basically define our own materials with uh, pre-custom basically magnetization directions. That will be useful for many simulations uh, that you might have with the permanent magnet. Okay, let's uh, start um, at the very beginning to uh, check out how we can uh, model the design that we saw a few seconds ago. Uh, first of all, uh, for the newers, uh, we want to, in this chapter, we are talking about the magnetostatic simulation, so uh, you make sure that your simulator is set to the magnetostatic one. Uh, press OK on that. Also, um, all of the units that uh, I'm using in this uh, tutorial is going to be uh, millimeters, as you can see here. If your units for any reason is not millimeters, go under the modeler uh, option, uh, I mean, the uh, menu, and select the units there. And make sure that the unit is in millimeters before you start anything. Okay, so these two things are the most important things that you want to make sure about that. So the very first thing that you want to do is you want to have a region where we can do our simulations in. So uh, I'm going to define the regions, making sure that my material or default material in this, in this case is vacuum. And now I'm going to press on the box as always and just set the numbers. For x value, I'm going to put minus 200 millimeters. For y, I'm going to have minus 200 millimeters. And for z, I'm going to have minus 200 millimeters. When it comes to the dx, dy, and dz, as uh, to, to make it symmetric, we will have 400, 400, and 400. And that will give us uh, a, a very good uh, box um, around the, uh, the center point. Uh, I'm going to call the box 1, uh, rename it to region, and uh, press OK on that. And um, probably I want to make sure that it's in display waveform. And uh, if I go to the eye, I can actually get rid of it because uh, I don't need it at this time to see it all the time. It's there, but it's not going to bother me uh, when I'm doing the simulations. OK. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a magnet that we can use it uh, later on. So um, I'm going to press and hold the Alt key and uh, double click on the top of the surface. So I will switch into the X, Y uh, plane. So in this case, I'm going to just draw a circle. And the center of the circle is going to be 0, 0, 0. And the dx of the circle is going to be 40 millimeters. And I'm pressing OK on that. Uh, the very first circle is going to call, uh, I'm going to call it the ring magnet. Uh, so it's going to be 
bring oops my bad it's gonna be ring magnet okay and uh, I think I will go with the color probably bluish and uh, press OK for that okay I'm gonna click on this uh, fit to the selected drawing in the active area and it will select and make sure that we are seeing the same drawing okay now I'm gonna make another ring and subtract that from the first ring that I have so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the circle again and I use this snap to go into the circle and when it comes to DX I'm gonna say 30 and press OK and this time I'm gonna say a hole for the name of that so I know what I'm doing and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend this uh, history tree and go here and uh, select the hole and hold and press the control key and select the ring magnet and I'm gonna use the subtract and make sure that the hole basically I'm gonna the tool is going to be the ring the tool is going to be the hole and the uh, blank part is going to be the ring magnet okay and then press ok there we go now we have our ring right there so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this I select the ring magnet and I go to the edit modeler sorry I'm going to do, go to the modeler and then on the modeler I will select the boolean and under the boolean I select the split so I'm gonna first split it uh, uh, on a plane of YZ so that's the plane and I want to make sure that I'm keeping both fragments and um, I, I'm gonna split the entire selection and delete invalid objects object. that's why I'm just pressing OK on that okay so now you can see that it's split into two Again, I'm going to select both of them, uh, or I can actually select here, press and hold the key, a control key, and now I'm going to go to the modeler, the boolean, and then to the split, and over here I'm going to split on uh, basically X and, X and Z plane, as you can see here. So on the X and Z plane, I'm going to have them split, and I'm going to make sure that I'm keeping both fragments. Press OK. So there we go. We have now four parts from a ring. We split it into the four parts, and now we can change the names uh, to what we want. So let's call this one. Uh, let's call this one the North. So if I actually open this a bit more and. Uh, So now I can call this one the North A, North 1, maybe, North 1, and um, probably a blue color is a good color for that. It is blue, okay, done. And this one is going to be the South. Two, for example, and I'm gonna put a color of, let's call it greenish. And um, this is going to be the north two. That will be the second north that we have for the magnet, and it's gonna have a color of the oranges. Okay, and uh, lastly we have the south one with uh, got the reddish color. Okay, so that will uh, finish our 
job of creating the colors actually uh, let me just make sure that the color is distinguishable enough so I'm gonna put yellow here and I want to make sure that this guy here is pretty uh, more red because uh, we want to make sure that we are seeing the right colors okay so now that we've, we've done that uh, we want to create a sweep in that case we want to have a sweep with an angle and uh, to do that first you want to create a line so what I do all the time is I just uh, select a line and put whatever point that I like and then I right click and I say done and uh, over here we have polyline one we can call it path actually so you press OK and you go on the path and actually uh, put the numbers that you want to put exact numbers so in this case I want to put 0 0 and minus 20 0 0 and minus 20 and for the second set of uh, points we can put plus 20 so it's 0 0 plus 20 press OK to that so that would be our path now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select all these sheets that we have so I'm gonna select all of them. Well, it does not work with the shift okay so I'm gonna select all of these sheets and the path and I'm gonna go to the modeler and then I'm gonna go to sorry I'm gonna go to draw and then sweep and then along the path so I'm clicking on that now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna twist while I'm sweeping up so when I do that um, what I would get is um, I would have a 45 degrees twist on it so I, I'm gonna have 45 degree twist and uh, that's it just say okay so the result is if I move this a bit uh, it's something like this okay I hope you can see how it looks like so these are uh, four poles of magnets with S and N and S and N and that's how it worked okay great so now now what we want to do is we want to create a magnet material for our uh, north and south uh, poles so what we do is we just go and um, first of all uh, select the north the two north uh, materials so right now everything is vacuum so we don't want that so we just select our north A north 1 and north 2 as you can see here and right click on that and say assign a material and uh, over there uh, it's it's one thing we can do is you can search for um, a common um, material for the magnets um, NDFE 35 okay and then we say a clone material so we clone it and then we call it uh, probably magnet or for the Norse Norse magnet or magnet north and uh, we go to the cylindrical uh, since it's easier to uh, define all the values and uh, we have minus 890,000 um, 890, uh, for the magnitude of that um, and the R is on, on the R and everything is basically fine we just uh, press OK on that okay you can actually validate the material and it says that it's valid so uh, magnet N is selected and created so these two guys are going to be magnet and now for the two other parts uh, south and the south two so you can do the same thing just uh, basically uh, uh, hold the control key and select both of them both the assigned material uh, again in the FE35 and then clown and then over here we call it magnet probably south and uh, we go to the Cartesian cylindrical and minus 89,000 minus 890,000 and the R is going to be minus one So the R is going to be the opposite. So it's going to be south by putting minus 1 here. We validate everything is fine and then press OK. OK, now we did define the materials for the other two parts as well. 
so that's how you uh, define the materials for that and uh, now what you're going to do is you are going to apply the mesh and make sure that um, the simulator can run the mesh engine on this SCUD material so you can see that you have different materials and it's all SCUD so 45 degrees so you want to make sure that uh, the mesh engine can handle that okay so this would be the subject of the next tutorial